In this section, we are going to look at a basic introduction to Selenium automation tool. Now Selenium, if you have worked in the testing space, you must have heard about this word Selenium, right? So it's the most popular automation tool used by many companies uh, throughout the world to automate their web applications in different, uh, in different areas. So uh, here we are going to look at what is Selenium, what are the basic components of Selenium, uh, a brief history of how the Selenium name came into picture, and then I will look at what are the advantages and disadvantages of using Selenium. Right, so let's jump into uh, first what is Selenium. So it's an open source tool. Basically, it's free uh, to use. You don't need to pay anything upfront to start using this automation tool. It's specially built for web applications. So in simple terms, Selenium automates browsers, right? And it provides you with different capabilities to automate your different uh, applications across different browsers and platforms. So what you do with that capability is completely dependent on you, right? Now, there are basically three components, or you can say, it's a suit of uh, tools, Selenium. It's not just a single tool. So in that components, the first is the web driver. So it's the most important and the most powerful component of Selenium. It's basically an API, uh, which allows you to interact with different browsers and automate your uh, test cases. Now, it, there are lots of Selenium um, functions or methods which are available in this API through which you can automate uh, different parts of your application. Now, uh, for, for, I mean, every, they have built this API for almost all the browsers like Chrome, IE, Safari, Firefox. So, so that you can use different browsers for your automation, right? So you just need to download a uh, kind of driver exe or driver exe for each browser and then uh, you have the selenium web driver uh, language bindings which means if you are working on java you will have a different api if you're working on c sharp you will have a different api so all these apis for different languages are available uh, in that particular uh, in that particular uh, distribution which which they provide right so and then uh, in in that you will have uh, some of the selenium commands which you need to learn um and then you you can get started right so if you know some 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 level of java you can combine that knowledge uh, with your selenium commands which are present already and you can build your own reusable functions and methods which you can use uh, within your framework or uh, to automate your web applications. So that's uh, that's what WebDriver provides you with. Now coming to the next component, which is uh, the ID. Now it's a kind of a record and playback tool, uh, which is used mostly for prototype applications. Uh, if you're working on a real application, right, which has got complex flows uh, and a number of complex scenarios, I would not recommend to go for ID. Uh, you should always use WebDriver when you are working on a real application. Uh, but ID, uh, if you don't want to create your own scripts, then you can use it as a record and playback. So which means uh, you record your um, actions which you're performing on the browser and Selenium ID will uh, generate the scripts for you, which you can run uh, to start your automation, right? But uh, I would personally not recommend uh, to directly use ID for your automation. So you can obviously do some compatibility, compatibility checks, right? Or build a POC using Selenium ID for your application so that before going into Selenium, you know that uh, this application is compatible with Selenium. Now, uh, the next component is also very important. So this helps us to run our tests parallelly in different environments, right? So this is called Selenium Grid. It's it's a server, basically. Uh, 
which allows you to test your web browser instances which are running on your on different remote uh, machines right so you just need to install a selenium standalone server uh, on that particular machine and then uh, there will be other machines which will act as nodes and one machine or one server will act as a hub so when you start triggering your tests in this hub it goes and executes um, all the tests on different remote machines which act as nodes and uh, they will have different browser combinations so this way you can test a number of platforms a number of browsers uh, parallelly across so uh, it, this saves you time and also uh, increase your test scope so right so that's what selenium grid provides now jumping on to the next topic which is a brief history about uh, how the selenium name came right although it's um, not mandatory to learn this but it's good to know if you're working on selenium if someone asks you why the name selenium right so this was this came uh, from one of the creators of selenium uh, whose name was huggins so when this uh, selenium tool was being developed there was another company mercury who was also developing a popular automation tool right and that's when huggins uh, mentioned in an email that uh, that competitor mercury right so he said uh, the mercury poison can be easily uh, cured by selenium supplements by making selenium supplements now this email when it reached to its teammates they took the, they took it quite seriously and selenium uh, looked to a good looked to be a good name for the automation tool and that's when uh, they took that name and started running with it so that's how the name selenium came into picture now looking at some of the advantages and disadvantages of using selenium so obviously the biggest advantage is open so it's open source and free so there is a big community open source community which is supporting selenium now they they are releasing a number of uh, they have already released many versions of selenium right so we have seen change uh, we have uh, seen selenium changing over the years and uh, if, while i'm recording this video i would all i would say that they are going to release the selenium 4.0 soon uh, some alpha versions of it are already released so there are lots of changes which are coming uh, into the selenium uh, web driver and other parts of uh, selenium so the next advantage is obviously the language and framework support so it supports as i said a number of different languages so it doesn't matter if you're working on python or java or dotnet applications you can uh, integrate your language skills with selenium and start working on it right similarly it provides a number of different uh, it supports a number of different frameworks so if you are working on junit if you are working on testng or cucumber for that matter or selenium so there are many many frameworks which selenium supports right so you can make use of this frame frameworks to build your project uh, and your automation suits right now coming to a uh, browser and os support so it supports almost all the browsers as i said earlier also it supports chrome uh, i firefox safari uh, and many others so don't need to worry about uh, if you are testing on multi, uh, browsers or doing some cross browser testing you can use selenium uh, very effectively similarly it supports a number of different operating systems uh, windows mac you uh, linux so you need to make some changes uh, i mean it's pretty when you're working with web applications obviously it is a little bit easier when you are working with windows uh, you need to make some uh, tweaks when you are working with linux or mac um, right because uh, installation of uh, installation of uh, browsers may be a little bit uh, tricky but still selenium supports it for you coming to other advantages so um, you can do parallel execution so making use of some 
frameworks like JUnit and TestNG, you can easily uh, make your test pa run parallelly across different browsers or different platforms. Or you can use um, other tools to integrate with Selenium, like you can use the popular popular uh, platforms like Sauce Labs, or uh, you can use Browser Stack, who provide the cloud cloud platform where they have uh, almost all the browser versions, all the different platforms where you can run your tests. Right, so you can easy, easily integrate this with Selenium and uh, run your tests parallelly across different environments. Now, uh, one thing is Selenium is pretty easy to use. If you are um, already com comfortable with the language, I don't think Selenium will uh, pose any challenges, major challenges. Obviously, obviously, automation challenges will be there, but as a tool or as a framework, uh, it has got pretty uh, basic list of commands. So once you learn those commands, you are good to go. Uh, from a selenium perspective right you just need to learn the java concepts which you can apply uh, within your framework so that you can build a robust and reusable uh, selenium framework right for you to use plus um, as i was saying it's pretty flexible uh, because it can integrate with a number of different plugins um, across different languages which will help you uh, to make your automation framework more uh, reliable and you can easily build this framework using this uh, different plugins right now coming to some of the disadvantages so one of the di major disadvantage of selenium is it's only it's majorly built for web applications, right? And it doesn't take into consideration the desktop applications. Obviously, you can use some of the plugins or some of the external frameworks which through which you can automate some parts of the uh, desktop applications, like uh, you can use Robot API, or there are some other tools, or some other APIs which you can use. Uh, but uh, I would not say it would completely uh, solve all your desktop applications problems so you need to use some other tools with along with selenium to actually work with desktop applications um, the second disadvantage we, which i can uh, think of is uh, it doesn't have a out and out object repository so if you have worked with um, other automation tools like qtp and uft in the past you must have noticed they have a uh, a proper object repository where they maintain their objects and their properties but selenium doesn't provide you that right so you need to build your own object repository so you can use the page object model to maintain your objects or you can maintain it within a class itself so it uh, depends on how you how you build this object repository so there is no fixed way of doing this uh, many people do it different ways right now, the other major disadvantage I can see is it doesn't provide any reporting. So on its own, yeah, obviously you can use different APIs and plugins to um, create different reports, but uh, it doesn't provide you as, as, as a feature, right? If you, if you think of any automation tool, every automation tool has some uh, reporting feature or capabilities, but selenium it's not integrated directly with reporting we may see it later but right now it's not present but yes obviously you can use different frameworks like JUnit, uh, testng cucumber right so you can use these frameworks who have that re reporting capability um, they can generate different reports for you so it's not that difficult to integrate this reporting feature with selenium so I mean, there are, um, I mean, there are disadvantages of using Selenium, but I would say you can get around these problems. There are workarounds available. So I would, I mean, obviously, uh, if you're working on the automation space, you should learn um, Selenium as it's the most popular and most widely used tool across the industry. So with that, uh, this is what I wanted to share uh, all about some basic features and uh, and some something about selenium in my next video we will we will see how how we can act, uh, 
how we can use different Selenium commands and uh, methods to automate our applications. So basically, you see a list of different commands, and then we'll see some of the um, locators which you can use for your web applications to find your web web elements in your applications, right? Uh, 